Now I'm going to show you a really quick and basic overview of the software called Capture. When your mixer is connected to your computer with FireWire, you can record directly to your computer with this program that comes um, with your Studio Live mixer, and it's really easy to use. Start out under session, you're going to have to do create a session. Um, you also have here with your sample rate and stuff. Um, so you're going to create a session and you're going to name that session whatever it is that service is called. Usually um, sessions I use dates of the service and uh, I go by year so 2011 and then a underscore and then month May underscore and it is 1.30 in the morning of the 6th. So I've created a new session for the state. Now the reason I do year and then month and then day is because when you have a huge library of um, dates, um, this is the easiest way to short sort them in order. If you do the standard dating method of month, day, and then year, you're going to get all of your um, Februarys together, all of your Mays together, um, but all the different years in in a different row, and it's not even going to be in order because it's going to be based on the day first, because that's before the year. So you want to go by your biggest date terms first. So year, month, and day. I'm going to click OK, create that session. Now this is the window you're going to get. Now on here, I'm just going to show you the real basics. If we hit arm all, this is going to record all each of the channels on that mixer and the uh, stereo main mix coming out of the mixer all as separate recordings. These are all going to be separate files. So if you hit record right now, what you're going to get afterwards is going to be 17 different files here. And that's a whole lot of files to work with if you don't plan on using all those files. So if you just want to record the rough mix of everyone, uh, the whole the main mix that you're doing, and you don't want to have to remix it later, all you're going to want to select is the main stereo mix and record what's coming out of the main stereo mix. Now, uh, if you're recording the pastor preaching for a podcast, you're going to just select whatever channel he is on. So our pastor, a wireless mic is often on channel 5. So I would just select channel 5. And up on channel 5, I'd make sure the meter's coming up. Now, uh, I have a mic on channel 1 right now, so I'll turn channel 1 on so you can see. You can see when I'm talking, that meter goes up and down. That means I'm getting signal there. It's ready to record. So I can just come over here and... When I'm ready, the service is ready to start, that channel is armed and ready to record. That light doesn't mean it's recording, it means it's ready to record. And over here, when I'm ready to record, I'm going to hit the record button. And now this is starting to make a track coming across, it's recording everything I'm saying, blah, blah, blah. Hit stop when I'm done recording. And um, when you're completely done that service, you can just come up here to file and go to save session and that's going to save the file that you've got um, for that service and then when you are ready to prepare that file for podcasting you come into the session and you go to session and you go to export to audio file and on here you select what the file's name is you select where you want to save it to so you can save the file you recorded, um, uh, you can export it, I usually export it to the desktop so that I can get to it easily, but then also remember to delete it after I'm done turning it into an mp3 because I don't want a bunch of huge WAV files sitting around my computer taking up space. So you select where to save it, um, format, we're doing WAV file, resolution, 16-bit, um, that's fine. Um, sample rate is the sample rate that's there. Now options, you do session or each marker. Now um, 
I'll show you how to do markers in just a sec, but typically you're just going to, if you recorded the pastor's whole sermon, um, you're just going to do that whole session there. And then you're going to hit OK, and it's going to output that recording that you did to a file where you specified up here. And uh, you'll have that WAV file ready to um, do additional editing to if you want to in Audacity. I've got a um, educational seri video series on YouTube. Um, and on my blog showing how to edit your sermons for podcasting. Um, and then, uh, so just walk through that and you'll have a, have a file ready to go. And then once you get done, you know, you delete that WAV file off your desktop once you've imported it to iTunes and um, converted it to MP3 and gotten everything set to go. So that is the basics of recording and exporting your recordings in Capture. Um, another cool thing that Capture can do is once we've recorded, so say we've, say we, uh, let's just record a bunch of stuff here. So say we've recorded all these channels at the same time. Let's say everybody's playing their instruments and there's drums playing, there's electric guitars playing, all of that. It's recording each of them as a separate recording. Now if we rewind back to the beginning and we hit play, where it's going to try to play back the audio through is actually on the mixer itself. You'll see up here at the top of the mixer, we have this input button. If that input button's on, it means that channel 1 is getting its sound from the computer, not from the microphone. So if you ever have it run into an issue and you're like, well, why isn't my mic working? Check and make sure your input select button is a uh, not on for the computer because if it's on select from the computer it's not going to get sound from the mic. Now in this case we want to play back everything we recorded and capture so say the whole band was playing their set we recorded a whole set and now we want to play it back and let them listen to themselves and we want to be able to remix it or we want to be able to take that recording home with us and through the week practice on how to learn to use the mixer better and practice on how to make the, the worship team sound better on with our mixing skills. So what we're going to do in that case, if we want to play back the whole band, is we're on the inputs, I'm going to turn all those input lights onto the computer, and I can go back here on the computer, hit play, now it's playing back all those channels. Um, playing back all those channels through the mixer. Let's see if I don't know if I've got this set up to play back anything at this moment. Let's say everybody's playing their instruments, there's drums playing, there's electric guitars playing, all of that. It's really Alright, so we just played back what we had. Now if you have a full band playing and stuff. What's really cool is the mixer is seeing each of those inputs coming in just as if they were playing live there. So you can record a um, worship set on Sunday, come in early the next week, uh, the next Sunday before the worship band even gets there, go to the recording you made of them, set the input levels to the, the input selection to the computer input, and then play back what they played last week for the worship set and you can come in and, and make adjustments to EQ for each of the instruments and vocals um, you can you can mess around with all kinds of stuff just as if they were playing and you don't have the time limit of them not wanting to repeat songs or uh, them wanting to stop playing you can have them play as many times as you want by hitting the play button and they don't have to be there and so you can really work on honing in on what sounds right. Um, the worship leader can even come back and uh, listen to the mix as well and hear himself singing and playing and uh, be able to give input and suggestions for the sound guy of what he'd like to hear more or less of and uh, uh, certain changes he'd like to have made. So a really handy feature that's uh, pretty cool. So that is Capture.